Um, so let's take a look at drawing skulls. Right. Um, because it's fun because you're out there in the field and you know, skulls tell all of these crazy stories about the um, about the organism who was using that calcium. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and so all of these um, adaptations are mapped into into skulls. They're really, really fun to examine and explore. Um, We'll do a little thing on it here. And this makes me think that it might be fun to do a um, uh, maybe a couple of Thursdays, kind of doing a deeper dive into skulls. But let's take a look at it now. This is one of my favorite skulls from my little collection. We've got a little collection of, of, of skulls happening over there on my, uh, in my cabinet. And the girls love kind of getting into there. But this one has a really fun story. Um, really interesting shaped skull, this big triangle. Found this in Marin County on the top of a wood rat nest. And a wood rat had found this and had dragged it over to the top of its nest. So wood rats also called pack rats. They will kind of finally like, oh, this looks cool. I'm gonna go decorate my house with it. And it was, it had set it on top of that, of its nest. Um, and this wasn't in a place where other people kind of go and, and, and explore. And so I don't think somebody went and put it there. I think that this was brought in by the wood rat. So what I did is I saw it one day and then I went and I got a raccoon skull that was the same size. And the next time I was there by that bush, I swapped it out because I thought it would really bum out the, uh, um, the, the, the little uh, wood rat if um, to, to totally lose its, its collection. But I gave it a really cool one with the top and a, and a bottom, the, the top jaw and the, the lower mandible. It was a full kind of articulated thing. I stuck that on top of it. So I think the little, the wood rat still got an idea, a cool thing, but that's right. <laughs> Susan's saying like the Indiana Jones, skull swap. Um, the, uh, and, and this, this is the skull of a badger. And so that was, that's really fun. Um, the, uh, so let's just take this little badger skull and we'll make a few sketches of it and, and see if, um, that, uh, what, what you can do for that. Yeah, I, I will, I, I break for road kills. I have a little road kill activity kit in the back of my car. Um, the uh, So I will collect skulls and then clean them, prep them. And you know this, so this is another one that I um, cleaned and prepped and and uh, you know this is this is a raccoon. This is the badger. Look at how the big broad zone for muscle attachment to back across the back of the skull of the badger. That's that's crazy. Um, but let's 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 mess with with this one just a little bit. Um, jump over to the document camera. There we are. So I am going to just do a couple of studies with this from, from, from two different angles. Um, one is a side view and one is a top view. And the for, for getting this, this top view down, something that is really kind of useful to do is to loosely, lightly trace it. It's a smaller skull. And I, I keep that really loose and light because 
um, you know, it's 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 going to be when, when, since there's there's space between the skull and if you're tracing something like this, you know, you can go right around the edges of it, jump, 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 jump. But this, it's lifted off. So tracing something like this, you're going to get something that is much more. Uh, tentative. If you look very carefully, you can see just a few pale lines. That's the way I wanted it. I wanted something that would um, that would uh, not be too bold. I'm now creating little line down the middle, sort of a central axis of the skull. And something that's going to really help this skull is if it is bilaterally symmetrical, so that this side is the same width as, and proportions as this side. So what I'll often do is I'm going to pick a landmark, like let's say the back edge of this zygomatic arch here. And <clears throat> So there is a line where that back edge is going to be. All right, and the front edge of it is going to be here. So what I'm doing is I'm putting in these little um, parallel guides so that this skull ends up more symmetrical down the line. So I'm just making sure that these lines are all at right angles. Um, there is the brain case in here. Um, that is roughly triangular. And so what I'm doing is I'm putting it in here on this side. I'm thinking as I flip over to the other side, I'm trying to get that to be about the same size. Um, so there's the brain case, and then these little wings that, that flip out, curve in, wings that flip out, curve in. And as I do this, I'm going to be looking back and forth between the two sides, just trying to, to keep myself roughly symmetrical. Actually, what I'll do, I'll try to keep this in the middle of the screen so that you're also looking down on it from your point of view. That will make it easier if you're drawing from home um, to be able to, so I'll try not to move this around as much. Um, so from, from here, it's gonna swing out. And so I'm gonna get my little swing out here. And look at that, see there's an asymmetry. This side has ended up larger than this side. It's a little thing right now, but that will just kind of grow. Um, so I want to, to trim that in so that they are just trying to keep these things roughly symmetrical. And this part of the drawing is loose, it's light, it's, it's sketchy. Um, this part here is a little bit wider. Once I get a few lines down, are you gonna see me moving lines around? So I'm not gonna be locked into any of these lines. Um, here's the back end of the zygomatic arch at this level. Maybe I push you back a little bit so that you are. And that's going to come, the, the shape comes down, the shape comes out. There's a little bit of a loop at the end. Here, this comes out. And then there's a big curve. Now I want to look at, compare this negative shape with 
this negative shape. How are they different? How are they the same? How did I do? Huh. Well, it looks like this one is longer. And, 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 yeah, I bet if I pull this down longer, that will help it. Yeah, that helped a lot. Um, so, but notice that I didn't just put a mark down on my paper and just assume that it's right. What I did is I put a mark down on my paper and I looked for where it's wrong. Instead of looking to confirm, actually, I'm going to put the camera on my face for a second because this is, this is a, not just a sketching tip, but a critical thinking tip. Check this out. I'm not looking for evidence to confirm that I'm right. As scientists, we don't do that. We look for disconfirmatory evidence to where we say like, where, um, where is this off? And if I look for that, I'm much more likely to see it. If I tell myself like, let's just check to make sure that's right, your brain will go like, fine, it's okay, right? But if I actually look at it from the point of view of like, um, you know, what did I, um, what, what did I do wrong? Um, my brain is much more likely to, to notice it. Now, you may find that this kind of thinking at the start is, um, is intimidating because it makes you focus on things that um, you would say like, this is gonna get me focusing on things that are wrong. But here's the deal. Everything that I noticed that is a little bit off, at this point in my drawing, I have a chance to change all those things. So the first lines aren't my final lines. They're just a rough placeholder. And then I go like, and how do I want to refine that? And how do I want to refine that? Once I've got marks on the paper, I can then tweak those and move them around. And so don't get any investment, psychological investment, in any of these, um, these original, these first lines, because we want to be able to move them around. Similarly, it's good not to get emotionally involved in your ideas. Yeah, we don't want to get emotionally involved in our ideas. Because if I have an idea that I really, 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 really love, and I find a mounting pile of evidence that that's not correct, it's going to be hard for me to change that. So instead, get emotionally involved around the identity. So don't let your identity be your ideas. Don't let your identity of the drawing be the lines. Let your identity be someone who changes their mind in the presence of evidence. So identify yourself with the process of changing your mind in the presence of evidence, right? Rather than any specific idea. Let's go back to the drawing and see how this is gonna apply more to drawing our little friend, the spot. All right, so I've got one on one side and now what I'm gonna be doing is I just am gonna to try to get something that is gonna be roughly symmetrical and the same shape. So I'm looking at this distance here, this distance here. Right? And then it's gonna swing out. I'm trying to make this, I'm now looking at this shape here, just trying to make it symmetrical down to here. How far, how wide was that? That was coming out to here. Um, we were coming over. Oh, look at this. Look at how long this line is and look at it on there. Uh -uh, uh -uh, right? So this line needs to be shorter, and that means that this is going to curve into it sooner. Yeah, that's interesting.
All right, there's these two little bumps right here. The eye sits right in here. So this is the little bump that, let me just turn this. You'll see that this is this little loop right here. When you look at it from here, this looks like it's just kind of lining up at that bottom of the zygomatic arch, but you don't, you might not see that there's actually a really important point that comes out there. And then it tucks in. So let me put my fingers underneath that. So you see those points a little bit better. I'm gonna to wanna to get that. Where my fingers are right now are where the eyes sit. This is a place where muscles pass through. Um, so let's see. We have these little, little points in here. And um, these come in. This would be an eye hole here, an eye hole here. Because I'm seeing those as kind of ovals. And I want those to end on the same line. And then we're getting the zygomatic, the, the cheekbone or zygomatic arch is really skinny in there. here, so thicker and then thin through this part. If you look right here, there's another little point. It is, it's hard to see from your angle. I'm going to turn this again. And you see how this point comes down here and it points to this? So these things are kind of pointing up around the edges of the um, the where the eye sits, little eye in this. Um, and so even though from our view, this point is subtle and this point is subtle, structurally, those are important. And so I do want to also include those in my drawing. That's going to be just about here. I need to get this one more centered for you. Sorry about that. How to keep that centered. So from your camera view, I keep wanting to move it around for a more convenient position for me. So looking at this space here, this space here, so just trying to kind of line up those symmetries. And we have a little point here. Big, small, big, small. Which one is right? Do you guys like that one better? Or do you like that one better? I think this one is a little bit better. I think this one here is a little bit too wide. This one here, I'm going to bring in a little bit of. Oh, need that. that wants to be skinnier, doesn't it? So you notice that I just drew a heavy line, a thick line. Instead of going sketchy at the start, I drew a line that was uh, much thicker. I think it's a better plan at the start to kind of go lightly, loosely. Now, this one has the highest point of this cheekbone here. This one has that point here. Which one is correct? I think I like that better, so.
One moment. Oh. My eraser has walked off my desk. Straighten that one there. Um, and so now I'm going to come in here. So um, I'm going to have a scoop. I have a scoop. And then it comes out just slightly. And then around. I will often tend to talk out loud to myself a lot. So this one is going to be, it's going to come. Here's my target for this line. It's a point right about in here. So as I'm drawing this line, if I know where that target is, it's going to help my line kind of come out there. Where's this target? It's going to be somewhere in here. Now, notice how this, especially this little asymmetry in here. Notice how the this side here is coming down straighter. This uh, straighter and this side here, there's a little bit more of a bend in it. And I think, which one is right? I think that it's about somewhere between both of those, right? Um, so I'm going to get in here and get this one to come out a little bit more. And this one, I'm going to get it to come in a little bit more. I'm getting some pretty thick lines in there. If these two shapes here are really different shapes, it's really going to pop out in the drawing. People will see these two negative shapes. So that is that is a good place just to double check, triple check. <clears throat> so now I've got, there's a snouty place. Uh, what are we doing? We're coming down here. We are coming down here. Um, ooh, asymmetry again. Um, this is big, this is small. Which one is more? I want to tuck this one in. Okay. And it's going to have this sort of rounded, it's going to come up and up, round. And then we're going to pop out of that. Now, for this little nose hole here, what I'm going to do is notice how the top edge of it, where I'm bringing my pencil across here, is very clearly defined. All right? This outer edge is clearly defined, but the inner side of this nose hole um, is, is, is not. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to um, scoop and bump. There's a scoop and bump. And as it comes towards the bottom, I'm just going to let that line peter out into nothing. On the floor of the skull there, I see there are a couple of little spots.
there is a little indentation here. I'm going to show that just by a little bit of shadow. Let's work along the back edge. There is a little Y that comes up here to this symmetry spot there. You see there is part of the, the place where this goes into the spinal column with little ridges, like little horns that stick up on either side. This is going to come up and then curve down, up and curve down, up and curve down. And I've got a lot of this skull blocked in. Now I look at it, are there any parts that sort of stand out to me as like, ah, eh, that part there looks weird. Like this part here and this part here, those look weird to me, All right? Look at this curve here and look at this. I've got these kind of big, like, ah, these sort of angry things that wing out on the side. It's more subtle on my skull. Right. Um, so I'm going to. That was drawn with a pretty heavy line. Even when I put in a heavier line, I still try to fight against that. Oh, I drew a heavy line. It must be right. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Now, now for, I'm, I'm going to uh, actually do a couple other things. I'm going to put in just a few indications of details that I see for myself to notice that there is, there is a little set of depressions here. Um, these are a little bit more out. And now I think I'm just about ready. Actually, notice that this skull, see how this line comes straight down here, straight down there. On the skull, it comes out more to a corner here, and here. And then there's an, an angle change. And you don't see that really on my drawing. So what I'm going to do is try to have that kind of come out. There. Yeah. Better. So there's lots of little, those mistakes are not a problem. Those mistakes are an opportunity for me to see, to make to, to, to kind of look back and say like, what's going on there? Why, why did that feel weird to me? Now, I'm gonna have, come, comes a fun part. This drawing here doesn't feel like it's got a lot of depth to it. And the depth in it is like, especially kind of look in here, like what on earth is going on here? Visually, it's very confusing. So to make this a little bit easier to understand, I'm going to use line variation to make my drawing uh, easier to read. And here's how that's gonna work. A heavy line is gonna pop forward and feel like an, the edge of an important structure that um, 
I am going to um, uh, edge of an important structure that I um, that I want to delineate. So this here, I am going to put a little bit more pencil pressure down right around. Whoa! Just broke the tip of my pencil. Um, I'm going to also have that line come in here. That was really bold. And when I set this aside, because my hand keeps mopping in, it's easier for me to kind of have my hand up in here. Um, but I'm going to continue this line bold like that and that line bold like that, let it peter out. And you see how what this does is it says that there is this upper part here. This is now much more clearly the edge of this upper surface because I punched that in with a stronger line. Now, let's handle this, 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 this bottom area. Let's take a look at, let's make this cheekbone, this zygomatic arch area, read a little bit more clearly. Um, so this line that is in the back here, I'm going to keep that light. I'm going to keep that light because I want it to recede towards the back. But the cheekbone edges, these things that are coming up here, especially when they come into these points here, I'm going to reinforce part of that and leave those sort of the bottom edge line light. But this part here that's coming up towards me, There is a there I go breaking my pencil tip again. Soft pencil. All right. Now When this, again, when this guy is centered. So I'm going to have this line be lighter, but these ones here I can pop in a little bit more and say that it, this is Similarly, this, this is working okay for me. I am going to, sometimes people will strengthen parts of the line that makes the outside edge. There's a tendency to want to get in here and make all the lines the same weight. And I, I'm going to recommend against that. I'm going to suggest that there's a little bit of this ridge popping up here by putting in a shadow. And I'm also going to use contour lines. So these lines are going to come in towards this here. And here I'm suggesting that So there's an edge that is catching the light and on this side of it, 
a little bit of a shadow. I can also use shadows to push areas like this down. I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow in these areas down below here. Right now, my light is coming very much from this direction, but I want this to be kind of, if I put a little bit of subtle shadow in here, that is going to push that further back. I'm going to put some shadow area into the nostrils. And lastly, I'm going to put a little bit of shadow along the side of this, on this side only. I'm also going to put a little bit of shadow into this area here on this side only, not coming all the way out to the edge to be a little bit of reflected light. The reason that I put the shadow on that side only, um, um, the reason I put the shadow on that side only was that I want to give a suggestion that the sunlight is coming from this direction. Because I'm working on toned paper, I can add a few little highlights in. And where do I see those? I see that very strongly in here. So I've just got a white pencil and I put in a little bit of a highlight in there. I'm gonna pick that up right here on this little point. And I'll get around there. I'm going to get a little bit in here. And I'm going to put a little bit of white right around the edge of the nose. And probably that will catch some light too. This is a, uh, a wash pencil. So if I want to, I can come in here in the places where I have my darkest darks. Push those down. This pencil just, uh, wherever I rub it over, it picks up some of the, the graphite and you kind of get this wash effect. So you can treat it a little bit like watercolor.
Here I'm creating a clean brush, I'm just coming up, kissing that edge of that to bring that blend in a little bit more. This area here, just a shadow. My final thing, this skull has a few little kind of holes and divots. Um, there are a few little holes back here. There is a little bit of kind of an evidence of a sort of sagittal crest right along the top. There's a hole here. So I'm putting in just a little bit of a little more detail. Uh, here's a little crack in the skull. And now I'm going to stop. Oh, one other thing. I'm going to just hit this image here. There's a little, a little skull. Um, and I thought we'd have time for a side view as well. Um, save that for another day. But let's note that as I was working on this skull, um, there were a lot of times that I put in lines that, um, that weren't right, and that's okay. Um, I was able to go back and catch a bunch of those. And the more of those that I can catch, um, then when I finally get to the end of the drawing, the more the drawing is going to, um, the more the drawing will, well, there'll, there'll be fewer goofs in it. And that's, and that's good. The, but I'd say that a couple of big take homes for this sort of more careful drawing. Um, I was tracing, I was checking proportions on either side. Um, I was starting lightly and I was building that up and I was using parallel guides to help me kind of get things be, to be symmetrical on either side. Um, you do that and the skull will, those are old tricks that help you make your skull look just a little bit more scully. Um, and I hope that this was fun and useful for you that you got some tricks out of this that you can apply to other things. I think that what we might do is uh, I can set up a couple of Thursdays all about skulls. And we can look into a, both a little bit of structure and function and some other strategies to help us be able to draw what we see.